Coming up on today's show, Tesla finally begins to ramp up Model 3 production, a new battery technology promises to triple electric car range, and a final stage cancer sufferer gets bumped up for the Model 3 delivery list so that he can enjoy his new car for the short time he has left. These stories and more coming next on 10. This is 10 from Transport Evolved, the roundup show that takes the week's news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport and gives it to you in a bite-sized form just in time for the weekend. So kick back and enjoy. It's Friday, December 15th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and we're just a few weeks away from the holidays. I really hope you're ready because I'm not. We're going to start today's show with news from Sweden, where Volvo has quietly rolled back some of the promises it made on autonomous vehicle technology four years ago. You see, back then, Volvo said it had hoped by now to have 100 autonomous vehicles operating on the roads of Sweden as part of its Drive Me public test program. Those vehicles were meant to help Volvo refine its Level 4 and Level 5 autonomous vehicle tech ahead of a 2021 launch of Volvo's first autonomous vehicle. Now, however, Volvo says it will have 100 participants in the program, but not 100 vehicles. This should help Volvo respond more quickly to improvements in autonomous vehicle sensors and to build more progressively advanced vehicles rather than be stuck with old tech. The announcement comes the same week as Tesla CEO Elon Musk pushed back Tesla's timeline for fully autonomous vehicles. So it's clear that Volvo isn't alone in its change of plans. Tesla may be pushing back its plans for full autonomy, but that doesn't mean that Tesla isn't committed to autonomous vehicle tech. Indeed, this week, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla is working on designing its own computer chip to allow it to further advance its autopilot program, marking an eventual shift away from NVIDIA's specialist autonomous vehicle chipsets. It's not clear if Tesla will be making its own chips, but given Musk's other companies all make heavy use of AI, machine learning, and other automated processes, I wouldn't put it past Musk to either purchase or start up a computer chip company. Watch this space. Staying with Tesla a little longer, yes, there's a fair number of Tesla stories this week, the number of companies placing orders for the Tesla Semi is on the rise and now includes PepsiCo, Anheuser-Busch, Walmart and more. And at the same time, it appears Tesla is ramping up its parts order for Model 3, at least according to suppliers who say that Tesla's asking them to make more Model 3 parts. Tie this in with Model 3 deliveries now happening across the US, and it's clear that Tesla is eager to make up for the slow Model 3 production start. Since parts orders likely happen several months ahead of actual production, I'd expect production ramp up to take really off towards the end of Q1 next year. So if you're a Model 3 reservation holder, keep an eye out for that invitation to spec your new car. Ever since it participated in the destruction of the RAV4 EV back in the early noughties, Toyota has been vocally skeptical about electric vehicles, instead focusing on hydrogen fuel cells and hybrid cars. But now Toyota is beginning to admit it's been wrong and is a little late to the game in the EV development sphere. And in order to play catch up, it's announced a big deal with Panasonic. Yes. Tesla's battery partner to develop prismatic high-capacity battery cells that it says will be used in future electric vehicles. It's worth remembering, of course, that at one point Toyota was a shareholder in Tesla and even had Tesla build its limited production second-generation Toyota RAV4 EV. I can't help but wonder where it would be now had it not sold those shares. What do you think? And now for something completely different, courtesy of the Unity, a brand new crowdfunded electric car which was recently officially unveiled. Designed and built in Sweden, this unique looking car comes with a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack, seats two in tandem, one behind the other, and says the company behind it will manage 300 kilometers, that's 186 miles, on a charge of its battery pack. Priced from $17,500 or equivalent, it's also rather affordable and says Unity will come with five years of free charging in Europe thanks to a partnership with European utility company E.ON that will provide you with a solar-powered charging station for your home. The car is due to launch in 2019 and if you want one, you can put down a deposit today of just $175. US dollars. It's certainly a cool sounding vehicle, but as we've seen before, there's a really big difference between prototype and fully fledged production. Here's hoping Unity will make it. 
If you're in the US, you probably know that the GOP tax bill has been going through the reconciliation process this week on its way to final approval and perhaps signing into law. And if you watched my video earlier this week, you'll know that one version of the bill included provision for continued EV incentives, while the other version of the bill didn't. Well, it seems GM has been busy lobbying with EV advocates for the bill to keep those tax credits and, apparently, as of the morning that I'm recording this, the EV tax credit program has been kept. It's unclear yet if the tax bill will actually be passed. There's a lot of confusion again about support from elected officials, but if it does, electric vehicle tax credits will remain. GM may support the federal tax credits for EVs, but it appears that it and other automakers represented by the Global Association of Automakers are against California's zero emission vehicle mandate. At least, that's the impression given after the GAA's president testified to the House Energy and Commerce Committee this week in an attempt to have the ZEV mandate made illegal. The argument? That California's ZEV mandate does not have a nationwide effect on greenhouse emissions and doesn't allow automakers to use other technologies to improve average fuel economies. It's not clear which automakers exactly are being represented here, although most automakers are members, but it's worth remembering that Nissan caused quite a Ferrari back in 2009 when it publicly supported the ZEV mandate at a California Air Resource Board meeting. I wonder if it's changed its tune or not. It's taken way too long, but the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid is finally going on sale for the US market, with deliveries due to start in March next year. Priced from $35,000, the US version of the Outlander PHEV will have all-wheel drive capabilities be approved to up to £1,500 to tow and has been rated with a 22-mile EV-only range. That should be enough for most commutes, and in a U-turn from previous policy, you'll be pleased to note that Mitsubishi has decided to include Chademo DC quick charging as standard on the US spec Outlander plug-in hybrid after all, something which makes the affordable plug-in SUV a much more attractive proposal. I've not driven the newest generation Outlander plug-in, but if it's anything like the previous model, you should certainly get a test drive if you're on the lookout for an affordable SUV with a plug. Talking about deliveries, Daimler's Fuso began delivering its all-new Ecanto electric truck this week in Europe. While it's no Tesla Semi, it's not designed to be, the Fuso Ecanto is perfect for urban delivery routes, where daily total mileages are rarely above 100 miles, that's 160 kilometers. Among the first customers to get their new electric delivery trucks are DHL, DB Shekha, Renus, and Dasha, and there are plenty more customers waiting in the wings. My terrible pronunciation aside, here's hoping these new electric delivery vehicles really help make our cities cleaner, greener, and quieter too. I'm often asked by viewers to cover new battery technology on this show, and this week your prayers have been answered, courtesy of a team of researchers at the University of Waterloo, who claim to have developed a brand new lithium metal chemistry for electric car batteries that they say is up to three times more energy dense than current lithium ion batteries, giving an immense improvement in range. Part of that new battery cell chemistry involves adding a new sulfur and phosphorus mix to the electrolyte, which coats the battery electrodes in a thin protective layer and slows down the usual dendritic buildup on the electrodes, thus giving the battery improved cell capacity for far longer than usual. Here's hoping that new technology comes to market, but as I've said before, there's a big difference between something working in the lab and something making it into production. His fingers crossed that it does. When I mention the name Continental, you may think of car tyres and perhaps other automotive parts, but as it prepares to get ready for CES next year, Continental is upping the ante on both its autonomous and electric vehicle fronts, promising us an automated wireless charging technology system, as well as a bi-directional vehicle charger that makes it possible to turn any electric car into a giant battery on wheels. The details are kind of sparse at the moment, but with CES just a few weeks away and myself, Kate Walton Elliott and our new camera guy Brandon Yates all due to go, you can be sure that we'll cover this announcement and others in as much detail as we can possibly muster. And finally, cancer sucks. It, it really does. And if you've ever had family members fight it, my dad died of brain cancer. One of my sisters is currently undergoing chemotherapy right now, while my other sister is in final stages of breast cancer. You'll know that there are 
lots of things that you can do, but it's the little things that really can help cancer sufferers and their families get through the hell you wouldn't want to wish on your worst enemy. And this week, thanks to a help from Tesla fans and investors, one Tesla Model 3 customer who is in the final few months of life with stage four cancer, was treated like a VIP by Tesla and bumped up the Model 3 reservation queue just so that he could experience a few months of happiness with his new car. You know, the look on his face is so amazing and I'm so pleased that Tesla pulled out all the stops and got him that car. And on a more personal note, if you can, please do donate to cancer charities. There are thousands of men and women working to beat this horrible disease and they need all the help they can get. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss a single episode. And if you like the idea of watching this show with zero ads and you don't want to give any money to Google, why not consider donating to the show's running costs by making a monthly donation through Patreon. Don't make more than five bucks a month and you get early access to all new shows and you get to see them without any ads. So follow the link below or at the end of this video to find out more. But that's it for today. So thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving. Bye.